is Korea. Sometimes I think that's the last thing any of us will ever forget. Those kids laughing, crying, homeless, hungry, until we fed them. Korea, where it gets cold in the wintertime, as it does at home, where young men and women marry. Kids used to play happily. And here come your kids, and yours, and yours. Dirty and tired, slogging back from the desperate chosen reservoir fight. Not retreating, as they say, <laughs> but advancing in a different direction. The 1st Marine Division. While the head man of the village watches them pass and wonders. And the villagers still all wonder. And little Po Sang Ri wonders, too. Poor kid. Into the rest camp near Maison for Christmas. Christmas in the year of grace, 1950. Last Christmas. Christmas, Joe.
Fleet Post Office. Mail, stuff from home, flown in by the Navy. And is that welcome? Cigarettes, candy, newspapers, letters. Did you remember? Did you? And some of the boys didn't get back for Christmas. They stayed where they fell. And these are the replacements, the new men to take their honored places, to fill the gaps. Look at their faces. Young faces, American faces. New York, Georgia, Idaho, Texas, Maine, and California. Your sons, with a pride in the core and the will to do. Chow line, for a real feed this time. No K-rations wolfed in a foxhole. The first hot meal, get that. The first hot meal in two months. Steaks that the Navy flew in for Christmas dinner. Hot coffee, rather. Fleet Marine Force Headquarters and a formation for decorations. For gallantry and action, the Silver Star. With General O.P. Smith himself making the presentations and the hard-bitten Marine Guard of Honor marching past in formal ceremony. Well, it started the summer before at the Inchon landings. And as part of the 8th Army under General Walton Walker, the Marines move out on Sewell to snatch it back again. Faces look younger, less tired, cleaner, maybe. But don't kid yourself. They know what's ahead. A hard job, a tough job, a dirty job. So, let's grab a bite and get on. Here come the babies they'll need. Version tanks. Rumbling up to spearhead the action to come. And the train's loaded with war wearies going back for salvage. Loaded with supplies for the front. Here's our 75 millimeter anti-tank gun to argue with those people. Ammunition. With all the good old 30 caliber machine guns. Always hungry. Meet General Eddie Craig commanding the 1st Marine Provisional Brigade. Keen-brained fighting man with his operations officer. Ammunition.
That's one of theirs burning. In the hills. You could light your cigarette on that gun barrel. Bazooka, the 81 millimeter mortar, firepower and maneuver. An enemy shell, duck. That guy is with the rifle is the front of the war. The 75 recoilless rifle. And a direct hit. Walking when they still can. Carried when they can't walk. Loading the ambulance jeeps.
getting them back to the clearing station. For dressing. And shock treatment. and hypos to kill the vicious pain. And life-giving transfusions. Aren't you glad you gave that pint of blood last night? Or did you? will now, won't you? by helicopter from the front lines while the fighting goes on below. The clean sheets and food and the best of medical care the Navy can give them. once, but taken again. And still the poor hungry kids. South Korean recruits, raw. And then under a few weeks training, not so raw. Now look at this. And look at it. And look at it. That's what the Korean Republic is fighting for. Miles and miles and miles of homeless refugees set adrift by the Red Scourge. Whole families starving, fear-ridden, without hope beyond the United Nations. Shots for smallpox and typhus. And they don't understand. But they will. It was a big problem what to do with the orphan kids they picked up. They had to leave them somewhere before they reached the front. So they asked these good women to take them. Little Babe Ruth DiMaggio was not quite sure what it was all about. Solemn, confused, frightened, until he found friends and smiled in trust. He'll be all right now. Nuns don't smoke, you dope. Can 
candy, chewing gum. For the kids. But you have to teach them how to eat it. Poor, frightened little fellows. Once again. It's colder now. And how cold it gets in Korea. Brass monkey cold. And that's cold. Wet, too. Moving north into war's desolation. Hills. And more hills. Rivers and more rivers. Rice patties and more rice patties. General Chesty Puller, four times winner of the Navy Cross. Put some more fire down on those people. cloth on that guy's back is an air marker to indicate the front lines to planes.
60 millimeter mortar. Fights like a 75 gun shell. Dug in, ten feet deep. Colder still. Sawtooth wind. Twenty freezing degrees below. Makes a man wonder what he did with his last summer's pay, don't it? Now the prisoners come in. looking lot, aren't they? We searched them. We smashed their weapons. We questioned them. And then it happened. You remember Valley Forge? Well, look at it again. Snow, ice, wind. And all the time we were there, ten enemy divisions held us boxed in, surrounded short in all supply. planes had to break deck ice to get off and support. But boys will be boys. They'll keep clean and warm when they can and share their chow with those poor Korean kids always. Chow line again. Oh, sorry. This is not a chow line. Winter decisions had to be made in Tokyo, and an old soldier made them. Admiral Radford's headquarters. The decisions are passed to the Navy for action. Back to Tokyo again. Vice Admiral Turner Joy, Commander Naval Forces Far East. The situation in Korea is so critical that we in the Navy must give the 8th Army the maximum practical support. 
I direct that the commander of the 7th Fleet, the commander of Carrier Division 15, the Fleet Marine Air Wing, and the commander of United Nations Blockading and Escort Force be directed to provide the maximum possible air gunfire support. Make it move. Meanwhile, the Air Force under Lieutenant General Stratemeyer is alerted. This order caught Rear Admiral Eddie Ewan's Task Force 77 refueling at sea, right in the middle of a winter storm. I think the Admiral is praying for good weather. Then the weather broke, and USS Missouri, the mighty Mo, comes in. Vice Admiral Arthur Struble's 7th Fleet joins the battle. Carriers stand by and the pilots are briefed. Napalm, that is. Planes are launched to support the Marines at the front. That helicopter in the background is ditch patrol. Back at the reservoir, wounds and frostbite take their toll. And the casualties go out by plane. Heartbreaking withdrawal order comes. Burn everything and bug out.
payoff. And not leaving the dead either. pilots slammed their rockets right into those dug-in commies. thunder of the mighty mo.
that's how the faces got tired. Hill after hill. And then we go back again. The long, weary shuttle begins once more. Another enemy position to take. And this is how we take it. First, the air burns in, in close support. Artillery softens up the survivors, if any. And whoever runs gets cut down with small arms fire. Move in on foot. And we go in. For this is Korea, chums. This is Korea. Carrier planes in close support. What's it all about? You tell us. Ask any of these guys what they're fighting for, and they can't put it into words. Maybe it's just pure cussedness and pride in the Marine Corps. A job to do, duty. Wounds don't count. And dead men tell no tales. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But for little babe Ruth DiMaggio, it's his whole future and all of his life ahead and that goes double for our own sons' lives and yours. For this is everybody's fight. That the doctrine of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness 
shall not perish from this earth. Remember us. And remember us. <laughs>